Hi, I'm Ruyuan. This is Yao Feng, Leon, and Nicole, and Confucius. Our project is a sensor for cars, where the buzzer will sound to warn the user as the car approaches an obstruction, such as a wall or a person. As the car gets even closer, it will come to a complete stop to prevent it from hitting the thing blocking its path. This is a small scale simulation of the sensors that are found in most cars, which are usually activated when users are trying to park their cars rear and first. Now I'll be telling you about the components that we used in our car. The components we use are an ultrasonic sensor, a buzzer, a blue LED, a motor, a 9 volt battery, and of course, an Arduino Uno. The 9 volt battery powers the Arduino, which powers and controls the other components. If there is an object 10 to 15 centimeters from the sensor, the buzzer will sound. At, a, at less than 8 centimeters from the object, the car will stop and the blue LED will light up. If the object is removed, then the car will continue moving until it nears another hindrance. The ultrasonic sensor sends out a high frequency signal. The signal bounces off the object in front of it and is received by the sensor. The distance of the object from the sensor can then be calculated from the time taken for the signal to return to the sensor. Specifications for this particular sensor indicate its ability to, to sense objects at a distance from 2 to 400 centimeters. See, when one puts their hand extremely close to the sensor, it doesn't read the distance accurately, as can be seen from the blue light flickering. So I am Ion. I was in charge of positioning, wiring, and 3D modeling. What I'm supposed to do is to make the car as compact as possible and evenly weighted on all sides, and, pos and least possible material use for the printing of the 3D model of the car exterior. So I had to find a way to put all these parts together in like the most smallest area. Then the motor was also a bit too weak and small to move the car which was a bit too um, large and heavy. So as you can see here there's this lock here which is supposed to be in between the components and the body body of the car like that yellow thing and so it was eventually um, omitted Hi, I'm Yafong. I'm here to talk about the challenges we faced. Before the CNI week, we were actually two teams. Each team had our own ideas, but we ended up doing something entirely different in the end. One of our main issues was that the Arduino has to be plugged into the computer if it is programmed using LabVIEW. This would have limited the distance that the car could travel to the length of Arduino wire. However, we could not get the ultrasonic sensor to operate using LabVIEW because as you can see from the sensor, there are four pins. They are for ground, echo, trigger, and V in. So the sensor inside LabVIEW has only uh, has only ground, V in, and echo. So it lack of one trigger pin so that uh, it cannot be the sensor cannot be used using lab view hence we switched to using Arduino sketch uh, initially we wanted the car to stop forever when it came to a object in order to make the car stop eternally we had to put a never-ending well loop at the end of the program of course it wasn't work since it would require us to reset the program every time so it's a bit tr too troublesome Another major issue for our team uh, was that the total weight of the car and the component is too heavy. So it cannot, um, the car is, uh, when we connect the motor to the circuit, it doesn't move at all because it's too heavy for the car to move it. Um, so these are the three main challenges we had in the CNI week. Through the three days of CNI, I learned how to quickly brainstorm about ideas on the spot and improvise on what we had because there were many problems that popped up through the course of the whole project. 
such as coming up with an idea of how to put all the components of the mini car onto the car and how to make the car move on its own because the load on the car was too heavy. Although we were unable to move the car on its own in the end due to the power supplied by the Arduino being unable to run the motor, we were able to quickly return to our original plan of using the small motor to run the simulation to show that it was indeed working. I also learned how to share my ideas as well as listen to my other group members' ideas as we needed to coordinate our thoughts and ideas properly in order for the project to succeed. Being open-minded and flexible to the suggestions was another thing that I have learned through these three days of CNI, as we had different ideas in our mind and have to discuss the practicality of our ideas and mix or omit our ideas based on what the team decided. All in all, I felt that the CNI program was very enriching to me as there was a lot of things that I have personally learned from this experience that I can continue to apply in my everyday life. Through this project, our team learned the importance of adaptability and resilience. If something didn't work, how could we make it work? I was disheartened by the challenges we faced at every step of the way, from not knowing what most of the components were for, to forgetting that Makers Academy goes on lunch break. I wanted to throw in the towel several times, but a failing grade was simply not acceptable. It had to at least work. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye!